Welcome to CRC Cape Town's YouTube channel. CRC is one dynamic, vibrant, growing church in many locations, nationally and internationally. Under the leadership of CRC Visionary Pastors at Anareta Borsov and CRC Cape Town's Senior Pastors Aidan and Sharon Jeffrey, we have a mandate of winning the loss at any cost and mission to mend the nets throughout the Greater Cape Town by loving God, loving people and building the local church. We post weekly sermons of our Visionary Pastor, Pastor Ad Borsov and our Senior Cape Town Pastor, Pastor Aidan Jeffrey to encourage you on your faith and to help you grow in your walk with God. We also post monthly highlights to keep you updated as to what has been happening in church as well as testimonies of our members on how they've overcome certain challenges in their lives so remember to subscribe to our channel and visit our website if you want to visit us and get more information now do me a favor you all this morning put your hands together and thank this great band this morning Thank this great choir this morning. I like your moves. I mean, you, whenever I'm feeling a little bit uh, cold, I'll just watch you guys. I'll watch you guys move and they, they lighten us up. Come on. You know, this morning I was watching, uh, I got to church this morning. We have two evening services now and then this, this evening because it's still dark when I get to church in the morning. So uh, I, I watched this ushers this morning walking around and you've got to put your headlights on because you're going to ride over them. But when people are laboring this morning to make this service happen, the children's church is laboring behind the scenes, the band is here this morning. It's, it's a season. It's gonna, summer is coming, but it's a season. I want to say thank you to everybody, the sound team, everybody who works behind the scenes that makes this service happen, that makes the church happen, the sheet tables this morning, everything that's happening. It takes people like you to make the kingdom of God advance. Amen. So thank you to every one of you there in Stellenbosch, Somerset West. Come on, give yourselves a great big round of applause because you are a living sacrifice for the King of Kings. Amen. Now do me a favor, turn to somebody next to you this morning, make them feel your presence, make them feel welcome, smile at somebody, greet somebody, shake their hands, one or two people, thank God that you are alive, thank God that they are with you this morning, thank God that they can be here, and God is still with you, God is not against you, He's for you, Amen. Welcome to you this morning, great to have you in the house, like I said, great to have you in Somerset West, great to have you in Stellenbosch, great to have you in the house of God, because you know what, it's the best place, David said, I would rather be a doorkeeper, I'd rather be an usher in the house of God, than any place else. Amen. So ushers, you are in the Bible. Did you know that? That is why God is grateful to every single person who is a living sacrifice. Welcome to you. If you're visiting us for the first time, great to have you. I know it's cold. Thank you for getting up early in the morning. And like I said, summer is coming. So pray that summer comes. I'm a winter person, by the way, but I'm starting to pray for the summer to come now. I said to God, enough is enough. Okay, thank you. We like the rain. Thank you. Send, send enough rain quickly so we can fill up the dams and summer can come so we can have a bit of heat. Amen. Welcome to you this morning. Great to have the great church of Stem, uh, Stellenbosch with us. The great church of Somerset blessed with us this morning. Great things are happening all the churches. Put your hands together this morning and welcome every first time visitor. Those watching us by way of Facebook technology this morning. Welcome to you. Great to have you in us. Ladies, by the way, she is coming up at the end of this uh, in, in August. I mean, I'll be getting you a she tickets. I'm glad to see I saw some of the girls on social media this week were tagging their friends saying they're going to sponsor three or four people so come on let's be a generous church uh husbands it's a great time to send your wife away for two for two days so you can have some me time so bless her with a ticket and send her away to she so you can have some he time amen and you can play golf and you can be free and you can do all the things while they're having she amen so i'm expecting for a great time dreaming coming up at the end of this quarter with pastor art and all the, the churches around the country around the world it's going to be great what a great quarter a, a lot of harvest events coming up Durban's Harvest Event is next. Then a few more. Kimberley, Khabarone, um, Poch. Uh, George is having a Harvest Event this year. So come on, great things are happening. Many souls are going to get saved. Uh, as we, uh, you know, what a privilege to be part of an incredible vision that doesn't stand still. To have incredible leadership like we have with Pastor Art and Pastor Ed. It's Shee Joburg. Uh, my wife and Sarah were there yesterday and they had over 2,300 ladies at Shee Joburg yesterday, their first Shee. So come on, things are moving. God moves to the movers. God runs to the runners. God doesn't sit with the sitters. Amen. And I'm grateful to be part of this incredible movement, to have incredible leadership like we have this morning. I'm continuing our series called Make Up Your Mind. Tell your neighbor on your left-hand side, say, make up your mind. Tell your neighbor on your right-hand side, say, thank you for making up your mind to coming to church this morning. Making up your mind. I'm getting a lot of inboxes from people, people telling me that they are grateful for the series right now because they, are, they realize that in many areas of their life they need to make up their minds and I, I encourage you that it, the, the greatest thing you can do is to make up your mind because a made up mind is a powerful mind. Can you say amen this morning? And 1 Kings 18 21 our scripture verse and Elijah came to all the people and said how long will you falter between two opinions? 
If the Lord is God, follow Him. But if Baal, follow Him. But the people answer Him, not a word. Sorry, I can hear some uh, people speaking on the monitors, please. Can you just switch something off so we don't uh, fight with each other? Thank you. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you fall to between two opinions? I've been talking to us about making up your mind. Because very often, as human beings, we have this tendency to struggle to make up our minds. And it's not wrong sometimes, but sometimes it can be wrong. And Elijah is standing before the nation of Israel and he says to them, If God is God, follow Him. But if Baal, speaking of the superfluous external things in this world that so many people chase after, so many people run after, speaking of the things that, 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 that hold us busy all the time, our careers, our businesses, and God is for those things, but we can never get to the point where we worship those things, where those things become more important than the presence and the peace of God. Can you say amen this morning? And so what Elijah was saying to Israel was, make up your minds. Like I said before, made up mind is a powerful mind. We've been looking at the last few weeks at the four aces of decision that I said I've experienced over my 27 years of serving Christ. There are many decisions that people have to make, many areas that people have to make up their minds in. But the four main areas that I've discovered in 27 years of serving Jesus, we've been looking at these over the last few weeks. And the first S we looked at was the S of spirit. That people struggle to make up their mind. Is God flesh? Is He spirit? Is He soul? Is He what is He? And we made up our minds that God is spirit. And the true worshippers worship in spirit. John chapter 4, 24. The true worshippers worship in spirit. So tongues is in the Bible. Can you say amen? God is not on the cross. He was on the cross. Thank God for Him being on the cross. But He's now ascended to the right hand of the Father. Sent us a helper. And we have a helper, the Holy Spirit. So God is spirit, and that's why we pray in tongues. That's why we, are, we, we see God spiritually. I mean, we don't look for God in Israel. He's not there. We don't look for God on a cross. He's not there. God is spirit, and now He lives inside of us. And last week, we had a look at the fact that the second S, the S of submission. Wives, submit to your husbands. A great recipe for a great marriage. People, submit to governments. Submit to spiritual authorities, human authority, churches. Should I belong to a local church? Yes, submit unto authority. It's a, it's a scriptural uh, instruction to submit but we also look at the fact that we have to submit to God the thing people struggle with is to submit to God to come under the same mission as God and that is to reach a dying world for the glory of Jesus Christ to win the lost children of God back to him Adam and Eve sinned and God gave us the church he gave us the gospel and he said go and tell the lost children of mine to come home that means we should have the whole of Cape Town in church can you say amen it's God's will. It's God's desire. But we have to submit to God. We have to draw near to God. And we have to, He will draw near to us. By the way, I pray tomorrow night, please bring your Bibles with. We're going to start to pray the Word of God. We're going to send the Word of God in the direction we want our life to go. Because some of us are sending our lives in a direction by the wrong words. And we're going to take hold of those things. And we're going to start to declare the Word of God. And we're going to start to shift things in our life. And we're going to take the negatives and turn them into positives. Because I'm going to teach you how to pray the Word of God. Bring your physical Bibles, not your iPhone Bible. Your physical. That's the thing with two covers and paper in between. If you don't know what it's like, go to exclusive books. You'll see there's a few things like that. For those that don't know what I'm talking about, it's a physical thing. Amen. But this morning I want to talk to us about the third S. In our series, and it's the S of seed. Now, please do not shut down as I say that word because everyone goes, prick. Now, I'm not going to talk about money this morning, by the way, because that's not what it's about. Because that's the thing why people struggle to make up their minds. And it's amazing to me to see when it comes to the word seed, I mean, how the enemy will fight this, this revelation or this truth in the Bible. But it's one of the most debated topics that I've ever discussed or ever seen people talk about in Christian circles or in the world. People that aren't even saved discuss tithing. I mean, that's how crazy it is. Because the enemy will keep you busy to try and rob you from revelation. And if he can rob you from truth, he can keep you in darkness. He can keep you grappling for answers. And he'll keep you in the place of frustration. So the years of seed, amen. And like I said, we've made up our minds in the other two areas. And this morning I want us to make up our mind to be a person of seed. Can you say amen this morning? And as much as God is spirit, which you've looked at, spiritual connotations, because that's also sometimes the error of the church. They want to make everything spiritual and nothing natural. And there's also a natural side to God. By the way, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible said the earth is His. The gold and the diamonds are His. The fact that He cast the enemy down to the earth, the devil did not make the earth. God made the earth. God owns the earth. Can you say amen? But God placed on the earth a law. He placed on the earth natural principles. The law of seed time and harvest like there is the law of gravity now let me say this to you this morning the fact that you might not believe in the law of gravity does not change the fact that it exists so people say well i don't believe in the law of seed time and harvest well all i want to say to you is if you don't believe in the law of seed time and harvest then you can't believe in any principle then and if you don't believe in the law of gravity do me a favor after church today go on to table mountain and then jump off and see if the law still works it works 
So the Bible says this, and, Jesus, and the Lord chose a brilliant day in the weather patterns to, to prove this to you this morning. Because the Bible says in Genesis 8, 22, as long as the earth endures, which it is, he says, seed time and harvest, cold and heat. Isn't that great? Cold. If you didn't get cold this morning, then you can't be alive. Cold and heat. Summer and winter, day and night will not cease. Now notice what the Bible says. It's not me that says it. It's the Bible says. God puts a principle on the earth. He says, as long as the earth endures, he says, cold and heat. Now notice, cold is enduring. Heat is going to come, but we know now it's cold. He says, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So I've never seen, uh, uh, I haven't lived on this earth all my life, and suddenly God took away day, and then night just existed. He said, it shall not cease. So there's day, there's night. It keeps running. God put this, this, this principle into motion. You do not have to worry about the day or the night. It'll happen by itself. Because God said, as long as the earth remains, this will be on the earth. I mean, cold and heat. There wasn't just a season of cold where suddenly this endured for, for 16 months. And we're wondering when the summer's coming. You know, God decided to go on strike. Or well, the sun decided it's going on strike. He put a placard. You look upside and there's the sun got a placard. He says, I'm on strike. I'm not happy with my wages. Now, the sun doesn't argue with God because the sun just is the sun because it hasn't got a mind like a human who can reason. That's what puts people in so much error with themselves and so much delay with God's plan for their lives because God gave you a mind and a will. And the, the hard part for man to make up his mind is to bring that will in alignment with God's will. And so God puts a law. Notice the third law he puts in there. He says what? He says, seed time and harvest. So sometimes uh, what amazes me often is that Christians have no problem in applying this principle when it comes to gardening. Every one of you that have a garden, every one of you that have planted something in your life, people don't argue this principle when it comes to their gardens. They take a seed from the nursery, they go to the nursery, not even thinking, they go and buy a plant, a small little tree, whatever they want to do, they go home, they dig a hole, they put the seed into the ground, they close it, they water it, they go away. A few years later, they look back and they go, wow, that tree's got big. They believe in that principle. When it comes to procreation, I mean, we've got a baby boom in the church. The men have been busy in this church, amen. But the people have no problem in saying, honey, I think it's time we get it on because daddy wants a baby. Or mama says, honey, I think it's time we get it on because mama wants a baby. And so what, what the father does is he doesn't even think twice. He doesn't even negotiate with God. He doesn't pray. He doesn't fast. He goes straight to where he knows he has to go and he produces seed. Isn't it amazing? And suddenly mommy, we announce on social media, mommy's pregnant. Conception took place and we see the stomach growing. And then she was a 300 Coke bottle before the pregnancy. Now she's a two liter Coke bottle and we're preparing her now to become a mother. And suddenly she gives birth and harvest takes place. We all clap, we all applaud. You bring them to church, we go, ooh, goo, gaga, goo, gaga. And we give you nappies, all kinds of stuff. We believe in the principle of seed time and harvest. And then we start to talk about money. And even, ooh, my kumas brought, Mr. Kumas negotiate now. Now, I don't understand at all why we want to even stop at certain principles and then apply other principles. I don't understand it. And I never understood this. If you struggle with this principle, don't worry because I battled with this. I never understood this. I always thought the church wants your money. I always thought that the church is always about this and that. I mean, CRC very often sometimes gets a connotation. Well, not just us. I'm sure every church, but our church because that's the one that I belong to. People say, oh, if you join CRC, you have to give three months bank statements at your NMO. That's a lie. Amen. You have to give four months bank statements. Amen. We want to see if you're legitimate. Now don't take that seriously. That was a joke. No. So God is into seed. God is not into your need. Because if God is into your need, we'd all drive Porsches and live in triple story houses. But God is into seed. Why? Because He governed the earth on a law. God hinges his whole earth on a principle. And God himself is not someone who will go against. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. He's not a man that he has to come and say sorry. God hinges the earth on a principle. And it's the principle of seed time and harvest. Now I want you to know, the Bible calls it seed time and harvest. Notice the Bible does not call it seed time and harvest time. Because God is not subject to time. God is subject to seed. So seed is the human's responsibility in time. That's why there's a time for seed. But the harvest is God's responsibility. But God cannot move outside of seed. So if you're not seeing a harvest and you're saying, when's the time of my harvest? God says, I'm not subject to time. So don't chase the harvest. I'm waiting for your seed. And if you understand that seed, there's a time for seed all the time. And there's a time to harvest. So it's not seed time and harvest time. It's seed time 
our responsibility and then harvest. I'll show you this morning. Because if you can make up your mind in this area to understand the power of seed, because this earth governs on one principle, a law. God hinges it. Every single thing that God placed on this earth is a, is a law. So let's go back to the book of beginnings this morning, Genesis 1, 11. The Bible said, then God said, who said? Did the pastor say? Did the president say? Did the, the, the government say no? Did your boss say? Did, did, did some uh, unsaved uh, uh, person say no? Did some atheist say no? God said, what? Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, notice, when God said something, and then it produces. And the herb that yields seed, verse 12, according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So seed time and harvest is good to God. Amen. I mean, go look at your garden, you'll see your trees won't have many leaves on it now. It's going to start, when, when spring comes, it's going to start to bud. We're going to start to see things start to grow in our trees, the flowers, the plants. It's going to start to gain life as God changes the season. Why? Because seed time and harvest. Why? Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. God put it like that. I mean, God specifically puts cold onto the earth at season so He can stop people from using the natural elements. This morning, there was no one running on the beach. The dog is frustrated. He's running in circles around the house because he can't go to the beach because you cold. No one is tanning. No one is pounding the, the forests. No one is on mountain bikes early in the morning. No one is in the rivers. No one's in the dams. No one's using the natural. Because God says, my earth has to rest. So He brings cold onto the earth so His earth can rest. It can breathe a bit. Because when summer comes, we're going to pound the beaches. We're going to pound the, the mountain bike trails. We're going to pound the natural things. And then there's a time for that to happen. But then God says, okay, now when it's finished, we go back here again. And so in your personal life. There's going to be a time to sow and a time to reap. But if you don't understand this principle, or you never sow, you're never going to reap. Amen. And if you're only sowing and you're not reaping, it's impossible. Because you might be sowing the wrong seeds. You might be sowing something here and killing it there. Because your words have power. Amen. So sometimes we can be our own worst enemies. Because every single thing on this planet forms, comes from seed. I'll show you this morning. So the three things... That the Bible teaches us in Genesis chapter 1, the first thing he says, he says, let the earth bring forth. The second thing he said is, let seed produce according to its kind. I mean, I'm laughing now at this face app thing that's going around with all the aging of yourself. I mean, it's scary. Some of those things are very scary. I mean, some of the things you don't want to show people. Going, ah, this app can't be true. I can't look like that. But here's the scary part. Is that some of you take your kids and you age them and they look like you. Or they look like your grandfather. Why? Because the Bible said everything that produces on this earth will produce according to its kind. It'll look like something that it came from. So an apple tree does not produce, an apple seed does not produce a peach tree. But as Christians, sometimes we give nothing. We ask God for millions. And God goes, sorry, it doesn't work like that. There's a law. It governs my earth. God's not a respecter of people. That's why some heathens have more blessing than Christians. Because some heathens inherently are just generous. You've got Muslim people that give away millions and they get more millions because God said, when I put this law on the earth, Genesis 1, Christianity wasn't around then. God did not give the law of seed time and harvest to a Christian. He gave it to a human. So as a Christian, if you'll understand that and, and tap into what God wants to do through your life, you're going to be blessed. So it's not me who says it. It's not that person's bad or that person's better. God says, I put a principle on the earth. And I'll show you this morning how powerful this is. So it produces according to its kind. If you're not happy with the harvest of your life, I, I suggest you change the seed. If you're unhappy with where you are located right now in your natural man, if your finances or income is not in a good place, I suggest you change your seed because a seed will produce according to its kind. The third thing he said, whose seed is in itself. The biggest lie the enemy will tell you is you've got nothing to give. Oh, I don't have. The man said... At the waters for 38 years, the Bible tells us. For 38 years, the stirring of the waters, and a person had an opportunity to go from there into the water. And every time, he, he, he had an excuse. He, he never made up his mind that he, he could actually give something. Because the Bible said the seed is in itself. Notice, when a man and a woman procreate, when they make babies, the husband doesn't buy the seed at pick and pay. Why does the world frown on adultery? Because seed came from another source. It didn't come from the man. Are you with me? So seed comes from within yourself. Why is it that men know where to find that seed without even thinking? 
But when it comes to money, then the wallet is left in the car. Ooh, offering time. Ooh, you can get a gebruik. Jammer, man. Because that's a hard one because I, 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 I'm not totally liberated in that area yet. I need that money to buy food this afternoon. I haven't got, I need, I need, I haven't got. And there goes the seed from my mouth. So God says, well, if that's going to be the seed from your mouth, then that's the harvest you're going to produce. We looked at prayer the last few weeks. We've been looking at prayer that overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Sometimes your testimony is the thing that speaks against you because you speak in death against yourself. So the man, he's sitting at the, at, the, at, the, at the waters for 38 years and Jesus comes and says, but why have you been sitting here this long? And he's got this long list of why he can't. And Jesus says to him, but just make up your mind. When the water stirs, do it. And notice this. Every time in Scripture, when Jesus produced a miracle, he always left it up to the people first. When they came to him, he said, what do you want me to do for you? Because he wants you to make up your mind. What do you want me to do for you? I'm not going to just lightning bolt it out of heaven for you. You've got to make up your mind. I want to see. Okay, great. So notice this. He goes back, and then he always makes them do something physical, tangible. Whenever Jesus healed somebody, he then made them, he says, now pick up your mat. There's always something for us to do in the process of the miraculous. He never just says, you heal, walk. He says, now pick up your mat. Bend over and do something because that's a seed towards your miracle. Amen. So the earth brings forth. Notice God said, let the earth bring forth. So God is only looking for the earth to bring forth. Why do you think Jesus went down and made mud from his spit? Because the earth was going to bring forth this healing. He took sand and he rubbed it on the guy's eyes because the earth brings forth. Every single thing that you see, touch, taste, feel, and hear right now, the earth has brought it forth. Every single thing. Everything you see. This microphone, everything. The clothes you wear, the seat you're sitting on, the car you drive, the dream you have. The, every single thing, everything, the earth brings it forth because God said so. So everything that they produce, they take stuff that grows in the ground, we, we mine it, we make minerals, we make, we make resource, whatever it is. Every product, everything, if you look at these, everything, plastic, everything that you see, carpets, ceilings, buildings, anything, the earth has brought it forth in some shape, form, or size. And if you'll tap into that, understand the power of it, and, and know that good seeds produce good harvests, but bad seeds produce bad harvests, because the earth brings forth. So when God created the sun, the sun has not been given a mind. The moon has not been given a mind. The stars have not been given a mind. Sand, soil, ground has not been given a mind. The only thing that came from soil was Adam and Eve, you and me. We've been given a mind. That's why we can reason. That's why God said, when Elijah spoke to, to a whole nation, he says, how long will you falter? Can't you see that this earth is governed by decision, by choice? So people say, why does God send people to hell? He does not. You choose that. By not making up your mind. But the earth is bringing forth. Every day of your life, the earth is bringing forth. And for some people, Cape Town is a great place. Other people want to leave Cape Town. It's a hard place. No. I'm here to tell you this morning that Cape Town is not a special place and another place is a, is a different place. It's soil. If there's, if there's soil somewhere near your life, there is a potential for a harvest. Because the earth brings forth. Amen. Now notice this. The, the sun does not go on strike, like I said earlier. Um, sorry, uh, it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon, it's still dark. No, the sun said he's not going to work today. The Christians are like that. We just decide we're not going to tire this month. We just decide we're not going to give. We just decide to shoot our mouth. And God says, okay, according to your words, let it be. I mean, 12 guys go into a promised land. It's a promised land. 10 come back saying we can't. And God says, according to the law of seed time and harvest, I have to let you not go in. God didn't punish them. They chose it by their words. We can't. It's difficult. It's hard. I haven't got. Somebody's before me. I came from a poor background. Okay. Then have a harvest of continual poverty because that's what you're saying. I'm subject to this law. And when your words, they don't fly into the air, they fall on the ground. Or they fall into the hearts of people. So our words have power. That's what the Bible said. Don't just call somebody idiot fool because it sits in the heart and it produces a harvest. And the person goes, I lost my confidence. Why? Because that person said, I can't. Your words have power. Amen. Because God hinges his planet on this principle. But the earth brings forth all the time. Galatians 6 verse 7, the Bible says in the, in the Passion Translation, says, make no mistake about it. God will never be mocked. For what you plant will always be the very thing that you harvest. 
The Bible says the harvest you reap reveals the seed that was planted. So the harvest you are experiencing right now is a result of seeds you've planted a month ago, two months ago, six months ago, a year ago, whatever it is. And the good news is you can change it. That's the great news. That's why if you're overweight, you can lose the weight. That's how God works. It's a principle. If you've sowed towards your flesh and now you've picked up weight, you can change that seed by sowing towards your health and you can get healthy again. If you've made bad financial decisions, you can make good of financial decisions and God will get you through. But you're not, it's not just going to fall from the sky. God is subject to a principle, to a law, the law of seed, time, and harvest. Can you say amen this morning? Even your dreams. God hinges your dreams on seed. Listen to what God said to Abraham. He's about to take this man who's had no offspring. But he says to him, he says, Abraham, what I see for you, the Bible says, I know the plans I think towards you. But he says, I, I, God even hinges the foundation of our faith because the Bible said in Galatians 3.12, through Christ, now the blessing of Abraham now comes upon the Gentile. So whatever God promised to Abraham, it's yours and mine. Look what he says to Abraham in Genesis 15 verse 5. He says, and he brought him forth abroad and said, look now towards heaven and count the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. So the promise to Abram was yes and amen. But he said, God hinges it according to seed, so shall your seed be. So there's no dream in your life that you are going to fulfill outside of seed. I'm believing God for breakthrough. That's why the government is not your source. Because the word seed, it means the source of development and growth. Seed. If you sow seed into a marital relationship, the source is a child. The source is seed, but the harvest is a child. So the seed is the source. Seed is the beginning place. Seed is the, is the place where everything stems from. But the earth, the Bible said, is looking for seed. That's why the sand, the soil in your house. That's why buildings don't last forever. That's why your walls crack in your house. That's why wooden structures put into, gro into the ground after a few years falls over because the, the soil does not know it must not make it grow. Sand has not got an option. It just is sand. But the earth is looking to bring forth. That's why when you look at you say, oh, the building contractor, and that could also be the case. You've got a bad building contractor. But, the, but often... The walls will crack in your house. Why? Because the sand is trying to make your foundation grow. That's why it moves. It doesn't know that it mustn't do that. It doesn't, hasn't got an option. It's waiting for some seed to fall into it. Now, if you catch this, your tithe, therefore, your offerings, they're not a commandment to, to take money from you. It's seed that wants to leave your hand to hit the soil of the kingdom of God. And when the sacrifice of your hard work leaves your hand by choice god says now my earth can bring forth but for some of us we pray we're travailing we cry out to god and god's going i hear you but i can't do anything <laughs> because jesus had the same predicament he's in gethsemane and he's about to go to a crucifixion that he doesn't want to go to because he he sees remember we think it's just him that got crucified in rome in those days crucifixions were a daily occurrence they would have hundreds of people down the main roads and what the roman leaders would do those vicious leaders of those times is they would have you would they would they would for example case in point like let's say kuba road outside here you drive to church in the morning and there'd be like 500 crucifixions along the road because the romans would send a message to say this is if you disobey rome this is what's going to happen to you so it wasn't as if christ was the only guy getting crucified so he was fully aware because you'd walk down the road and you'd hear people screaming for their lives. Guilty people according to the Roman law. So a daily, in, in, a, in, a, in a Jew's mind or in a Roman's mind, you'd hear the anguished cries of people dying on, cro on crosses all the time. Only thing is the difference was that those crucifixes were in a T. And the reason that our Lord and Savior had a piece on top was because they put a sign up that said King of the Jews. So they added a piece. That's why our cross looks like this. Everyone's cross looks like this. But those crosses weren't made in factories. They were trees cut off from the forest. And they knocked them together with rope and nails. So that's why the Bible said, Cursed is every man who hangs on a tree. Because they actually were trees. But the Bible says Jesus has this predicament. He's about to go to, 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 to the cross. But he realizes one thing. Even 
he is governed by this law. That for Christianity to have a harvest, for Christianity to continue, something has to go into the ground. So God doesn't say, oh, you the Messiah, therefore you can avoid this process. He holds his own son accountable to this law. Footnote, the only difference between Jesus' birth was that if God had Mary take the seed of Joseph for the Messiah, it would have been an unblemished or a blemished harvest, a blemished sacrifice. That's why Christ was supernaturally conceived through the Holy Spirit. Because if our Savior has Adam's nature in it, we couldn't worship him, he'd fall short. That's why that's the only seed that is a perfect seed. But every other seed, God said, I'm going to use, the way he's going to come into the earth is through the Holy Spirit, but the way he's going to leave is the way man must leave. Why do you think they put us in a box and put us in a hole? Because we have to go back to the earth. Because it's the law. We don't leave people on a chair. Oh, there's Grandpa Bert. He's been there for 45 years. When we have your bri, Grandpa Bert's on the chair. We don't, we put him in a hole. Isn't it? So Christ comes and he's reasoning with his father. He says, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Like most of you when the offering basket comes by. <laughs> Father, if it be possible, let this basket pass me by. And you see the guy turns around, he's hitting his head on the chair and he's travailing. It's just a hundred bucks, bro. Just give the hundred bucks. Just chill. Just relax. You're not going to die. You're not, your, your sweat doesn't turn to blood. Just give the hundred bucks. Put the seed in the soil. Just relax. Because God's trying to bless you. But it's like this almost, I don't know what it is. It's this thing. It's a hundred rand note in our currency. And it comes from a piece of paper that we cut from a tree. It stems back to seed. Yet, for some reason, our human natures just want to hold this thing. It's like, I, I'm going to, I'm going to die if I don't have this. And Jesus has got the same predicament. He's in Gethsemane. Notice this. Adam sold us out in a garden, and Christ saved us in a garden. God had to redeem us through seed, through soil. He puts man in a garden, and notice, even the devil could not deceive man without seed. He gave Adam and Eve a fruit, seed, because that law governed the devil himself. This law is a very powerful law if you'll catch it. The tithing, I hope today, will never ever become an issue to you because the minute you go to the tithe, you're neutralizing the principle of seed, time, and harvest. A tithe is the least. A tithe was a, was a, a law brought in by God because for 400 years, the Israelites were in captivity in Egypt. And so they were fed, clothed. They were, they were looked after, although in terrible conditions, someone fought for them, someone cooked for them, someone fed them. All they would do, they never had to give. They just took. And so when God wants to send them to a promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey, He says this land is not going to survive if I don't give these people to put seed in the ground. But because they've got a poverty mindset, they've got a taker's mindset, they're not going to sow naturally. So I'm going to put them under a law. So He forced them under the law to give 10%. So you should never be forced to give anything because grace is free. 430 years before the law is given to Moses, Melchizedek appears to Abraham, and the Bible says, and after he has bread and wine, he has communion as type of Christ, Melchizedek, the Bible said Abraham gives him a tithe of all. Notice he understood even before he was forced. But Abraham didn't have a poverty mindset like the Egyptians, did, the Israelites did. So he gives him a tithe of all. A, a, a grace-free tithe. No force. So when people want to debate, what was the new in the Testament, Pastor, near? What is that? I don't know. If a man sows generously, he'll reap generously. I mean, if you've got five kids, you didn't give one seed, and then you had your first baby, and then God supernaturally impregnated your wife four more times. Like most of the Christians, we give once and we say, but I gave three years ago. I know, but that seed's been harvested already. We need a new one. Have you ever seen a farmer sitting on his porch at night, smoking his pipe and saying, Liffy, this year is going to be a but all the bags of seed are stored up in his barn. No farmer would do that. So the Bible says, God says, I will bring rain, Isaiah 23 verse 30. He says, I will bring rain upon the seed that you've sown into the ground, and it shall be fat and flourishing with it. Now notice he brings rain. So sometimes we're going, oh, praise Jesus for the rain. And then after the rain goes, oh, things are the same. Why? Because God brought rain for seed. 
God does not bring rain just for pleasure. He brings rain for seed. So you'll be a, a wise Christian to tap into the principles of seed time and harvest. That's why every opportunity you get, that's why I make a point. And I'm not saying this, I'm good at this, but I've made, it, I've made up my mind. I never, very seldom, maybe a few times, will I allow an offering basket to come by me on a Sunday morning. I never come to church without money in my pocket. Never. Never. Why? Because I've made up my mind that every time I stand in the presence of God, I will never rob God. Why? Because the, Malachi 3 says, will a man rob God? He says, you rob me in tithes and offerings. Meaning what? He says, you come to church, you walk into the house, you take. You take a seat, you take space, you take oxygen, you take praise, you take worship, you take the word, you take everything you eat, you get fed spiritually, you're full. The offering basket comes by and you go like this. You didn't even come prepared to pay the spiritual bill. Now, do me a favor today. Please do me a favor. And I'm sure you're going to be on Facebook. Go to the restaurant for lunch today and eat and refuse to pay. Or, or, or like some religious Christians, oh, I, I, I separate my tithe. Devil, get out of the sound system, amen. I, 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 I divide my tithe. Why? I mean, go eat today, eat, eat. And then say, well, I decide I'm going to give that restaurant half, that one a quarter, and that one a quarter. The manager's going to make you wash dishes. When God comes and says, will you rob me? And I say this to you because if you don't, I, I, I'm not going to put an usher over there and say, check a little beer, said, search them for wallets. <laughs> we don't do that. We should put a boom up there. And actually have a car that you swipe, and if you haven't given your tithe, you must, a red light must go and say, robber, 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 robber. <laughs> oh, I'm going to put a boom outside. You're going to pay me 10 bucks like you pay the mall freely to get your car back. It's on a queue. Ding, 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 ding. Some of you put a 100 buck note in easy because you're going to get the lottery return over the bottom there. You walk out, you're feeling big. You're going to get in your, your big fat car. I'm going to drive. I've had a lacquer meal inside. I've used everything in the mall. I had my wallet. I said, yeah, come to church. Ooh. Leave it there in the cubbyhole. And I say this because, because if you don't catch this, we have to force you, it's that side. We have to force you all the time to do something. And that's a law. And the Bible said when the law came, sin revived and I died. Meaning, when there was no law, I didn't know what I was doing was wrong. But when the law came and I wasn't doing that, the Bible said, it was like sin to me, so it revived in me. It made me show my shortfall, and I died. I felt guilty. So condemnation comes when we become stingy. Why? Because God's put a principle in the earth. Are you getting something this morning? And I hope we catch this because this is not a law. This is a choice. This is one thing. The Bible says to Abraham, I'm going to be, let your seed produce according to its kind. I mean, why did Jesus... Why did Jesus himself, our Lord, our Savior, why did he speak predominantly on gardening when he was on the earth? <laughs> Listen to what he said. The very first parable Jesus ever teaches. He comes to the earth, he starts his ministry, he finds, finds 12 disciples, and the very first teaching he gives is a gardening teaching because he's bound by a law. Notice this, Mark 4, th verse 3. Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. Talk about seed. And it happened, as he sowed that some seed fell by the way, so the birds of the air came into bed. He goes on to explain three more types of seed, three more types of soil, and some produced, some fell away, some shallow, some thorny, some stony, some good. That's why not everybody gets saved, because they refuse to sow their life into the good soil of the kingdom of God. Some people do get saved, and after six months they fall away, because the Bible said they didn't make up their minds, they had no root in themselves. They had one foot in the world, one foot in the church. They didn't make up their minds. Jesus explains seed time and harvest in most of his teachings. Mark 4, 26, he's explaining the kingdom of God. He said, and he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed in the ground. Jesus! And should sleep by night, there's the principle. Night and day shall not cease. And rise by day, that's why some of us, our days are not getting better because our nights are being anxious because the day before, there was seed time and we didn't put seed in. So God cannot change your tomorrow if you don't put seed in the ground today. Because God, I said to you, He's not subject to time. He's subject to seed. Whatsoever a man shall sow, that he will reap. Amen? Now He says this, 
should sleep by night and rise by day, and the, she the seed should sprout and grow. Notice, it's not your responsibility to make it sprout or grow. He himself does not know how. You, me, we do not know how the miracle comes. That's God's part. He's the, he's the God of the harvest. We are the people of the seed. He's the God of the harvest. For the earth yields, listen, crops. Jesus speaking, not Pastor Aiden. Jesus, for the earth yields crops by itself. The earth brings forth. First the blade. So when you start a business, first the blade, not billions and millions, first the blade. Then the head. And after the full grain, if you start a home sale, three people, first the, head, first the blade, then the head, after the full grain, multiply the home sale. We become disappointed. Why is a home sale not growing? Because there's not evangelical seed being sown from the home sale. Why is the home sale not multiplying? Because there's no seed coming from the people in the cell. Notice, the sower went to sow what? The gospel. So God doesn't give you a gift and a talent to order it upon yourself. God gave you a gift and a talent to sow it. To tell somebody about Jesus. Are you here this morning? And I say this to us because it's about seed. Make up your mind. John 15 verse 5. Sorry, verse 29. But the previous scripture. But when the grain ripens, notice... The seed that I've sown, when it ripens, immediately it puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. So God always will honor seed with the harvest. Never will He not. That's why it's impossible to sow and not to reap a harvest. The only thing that can delay your harvest is your words. I'm not seeing the breakthrough. Okay, let's put that on top of that seed. Let's put another lid on top of that. I mean, if you put a, a, a cement block on top of a seed, it's going to delay it. The seed will finally come around it eventually, but you're going to delay it by your words. John 15 verse 5, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Listen, Jesus speaking. Gardening. I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Amen. So in closing this morning, the Bible says this, that Christ is facing a predicament in Christianity. He's got to see this thing become a harvest of continual fruitfulness because God sent him with a mission. So notice what they did to Jesus. He's about to leave and he prepares his disciples, John 12, 24. He says, most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground, he's talking about himself. Even he could not leave the earth outside of a principle. That's why every other religion on this planet cannot produce eternal harvest because their Messiah is in, his bones are in the ground. Because if he rose from the dead, like ours did, because remember, for every seed there must be a harvest. So the Bible says this, he says it, it remains alone, but if it dies, he himself on the cross, it produces much grain. Now, Mark 15 verse 46, the Bible said, then he brought fine linen, speaking of Nicodemus who came to fetch Jesus' body from the cross, and he took him down from the cross and wrapped him in the linen, and, the Bible says, and he laid him in a tomb. So Christ had to go to the ground for a harvest of, a, of resurrection to happen. Otherwise, Christianity has got no power because there's a law that God governs the earth by. Are you with me this morning? And he rolled the stone against the door and so there's a time for it to, to be nullified or it's a time for it to be, to be pushed into the and leave it there. By the way, if you put a seed in the ground in the church on a Sunday, I encourage you to not pick it, do not open it up by your words. Don't attach a string to your seed. So if you're going to give something, make up your mind, give it and walk away. I mean, because most Christians, they give it and they go, what make I care for my geld? Think and you tug it. And God goes, boop, and, you, and the seed pops to the top of the soil. And he goes, okay. That thing was busy producing, but by your words, you now asked what happened to the seed. So I showed you there. It's lying on top of the ground now. And we're praying and praying and praying. And we're saying, there's no breakthrough, God. God says, I know, because you said, you asked, you, 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 you didn't die to the seed. You kept it alive. Unless a grain of wheat falls in the ground and dies. So if you don't want to give the seed, don't. But you don't, don't you don't have to ask a question. But if you want to see kingdom fruit in your life, then give the seed. And then give. And just die to it. And you go, Father, I thank you right now that my seed is busy producing a harvest. Because God is able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think. God. Our job is to put the seed in. His job is to bring the harvest. Now finally this morning. Are you getting something? 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6, Paul says this. He's talking to the church. Notice Paul did not just preach about tongues. He spoke about gardening. He goes, here's my point. The Passion, the, the passion Translation. He says, a stingy sower 
will reap a meager harvest. But the one who sows from a generous spirit, there we go, will reap an abundant harvest. Let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving all because God loves hilarious generosity. With offering basket comes, you go, ha, 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 When it's time to give your EFT, then it's like, ha, 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 Honey, what's so funny? I'm giving my tithe. Ha, 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 Why? Because you're laughing in the face of adversity. You are resisting the devil. Because why does the devil not want you to give? Because he knows if you sow, you're going to grow. And if you hold, you're going to fold. Amen. And he knows that. So what does he do? Let's debate tithing. Okay, right, let's keep that damster wheel going. Three months, six months, nine months. You could have had a harvest already. Why? Because he's a trader. I told you last week. He trades. He wants to trade away your tithe every month. Verse 8. Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace. Notice when you give, grace comes. So that you will have more than enough of everything, every moment, in every way. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. When? When you understand the power of seed time and harvest. John 12, 23, final scripture verse. He replied, Jesus, in the passion, passion, it says this. Now is the time for the Son of Man to be glorified. Let me make this clear. A single grain of wheat will never be more than a single grain of wheat unless it drops into the ground and dies. Because then it sprouts and produces a, a great harvest of wheat all because one grain died. Now, He's talking about himself. Then he moves it to you and me, verse 25. And he says, The person who loves his life and pampers himself, more concerned about himself, will miss true life. But the one who detaches his life from this world and abandons himself to me will find true life and enjoy it forever. If you want to be my disciple, follow me and you will go where I'm going. And if you truly follow me as my disciple, the Father will shower his favor upon your life. Stand your feet all over this place this morning. You receive the word. Welcome to CRC Cape Town's YouTube channel. CRC is one dynamic, vibrant, growing church in many locations, nationally and internationally. Under the leadership of CRC Visionary Pastors At and Noretta Borsov and CRC Cape Town's Senior Pastors Aidan and Sharon Jeffrey, we have a mandate of winning the lost at any cost and mission to mend the nets throughout the Great Cape Town by loving God, loving people and building the local church. We post weekly sermons of our Visionary Pastor, Pastor At Borsov and our Senior Cape Town Pastor, Pastor Aidan Jeffrey to encourage you on your faith and to help you grow in your walk with God. We also post monthly highlights to keep you updated as to what has been happening in church. As well as testimonies of our members on how they've overcome certain challenges in their lives. So remember to subscribe to our channel and visit our website if you want to visit us and get more information.